Okay, so obviously welcome to our coach opportunity call that we're hosting tonight. Sorry for the technical headaches. You'll have those. Um, my name is Taylor Truckee, and I'm going to start by telling a little bit about myself, and then Kelsey will introduce herself and her story, and then I will go into, uh, or after that, we're going to talk a little bit about the different types of coaches that there are and how this opportunity can benefit you. And then we are going to answer any questions that you have. And of course, you can ask any along the way as well. So to start, obviously, my name is Taylor. I am 22 years old, and I'm currently studying crop and soil sciences at Michigan State University. And I graduate in just a few weeks, which is both exciting and slightly terrifying. Uh, <laughs> I do not claim to be a fitness expert as a beach body coach. I do not need to know everything about nutrition or fitness because we have the top people in the industry to help us with that and teach us that. So, and I have struggled with weight my entire life. I've always been somewhat bigger than my friends, I guess, even if it's just height at a young age, I was always a half a foot taller than everybody else, which isn't a big deal to most, but it can wear on you. And my journey as a coach, I started as a discount coach, and I'm now an Emerald coach, which means I'm investing in the success of others, as well as myself, and the success of my company. And I'm still completely and totally on the beginning of my journey. I've got a long way to go, but to me, it's about sharing my journey and having others keep me accountable, because so often I've tried before, and I've fallen off track, so... This is just the start, and I guess part of this, um, of my history, is that I've always known that I've wanted more out of life. I've always wanted, there's always something that pushed me to be better and have an impact and make a difference, and I guess with this, I finally found that I have a way to do that and to be a, a catalyst for change for people, which is awesome. So, Kelsey. So my story, um, I transferred universities after my sophomore year and I gained about 40 pounds, which was not anything that I realized was happening at the time, as embarrassing as that is to say, it kind of sneaks up on you. And I actually had written 30 at first <laughs> until I did the math and I was like, no, there's another 10 pounds in there. Yeah, so I had to deal with that about an hour ago, emotional trauma from three years ago. And... I was always the person who was going and doing and just supposed to do awesome things, but I definitely lack self-confidence and that's something that can be faked, I guess, or masked and people believe or think that you have it all. You have everything. And in reality, we all have our own struggles. We all have things that we question about ourselves. And I have those just as much as the next person. And I've always been the person who, <laughs> if you knew my brother, my older brother, especially, it would make more sense. But I, my family had big goals for me um, because he didn't ever quite reach that bar. Love him to death. He's doing great now. But he was the problem child growing up, which put a lot of pressure on me to do well and be well and be the good earner and the good student and the straight A's and read and learn. And everybody always used to say, oh, you're going to be the one who has doctor or lawyer after your name or before your name, you know, and that puts pressure on a person. So I was always chasing other people's dreams and not my own. And that took me a long time to realize. And a part of coaching is personal development. And that's where I began to realize that I wasn't ever listening to what truly made me happy. I was doing what I thought was the right thing. And along the way, I kind of lost what I actually wanted, which again, was also a hard pill to swallow when I wrote that about an hour ago. <laughs> It's different when you put stuff to paper or computer. Um, so me, I've always wanted freedom. I absolutely, absolutely struggle with being on another person's schedule and having to follow it. I like to wake up when I want to wake up, and I like to stay up all night if I want to stay up all night. And when I get into creative mode, I want to just go and run with it. And having to be on a tight schedule or like a nine to five or show up for work after class, I would do it. But I struggled and I was not happy. I like to be my own boss, to say that in the nicest way possible. 
So I also knew that I always wanted to be a connector and a motivator. And when I say connector, I mean, I want to connect people with resources or people that can help them. And as a coach, I get to do the best of both worlds, connecting people with resources that will give them the tools and the capabilities to reach the goal they've had for a very long time. I also get to be a connector of people. And I don't know if either of you watch Scandal, but I secretly want to be Olivia Pope. God, she's awesome. But I, I love being able to see the relationship and the friendships flourish on my team and in my groups and people develop this connection with each other because they have, they could have completely different goals, but they respect that dream in each other and that hunger to do better and be more and to better themselves. And they just feed each other and say, encourage and motivate and just push. And I think it is the most awesome thing to be a part of. So that's really cool. And then I guess I signed up as a B, as a Beachbody coach for the discount to start. Um, that was the complete beginning. I was like, hey, save some money. I'm in college. All about that. So, and coaching. I started with the 21 Day Fix last summer, and I actually bought it early last year and tried doing it on my own, which means it sat in the box on my counter for about two and a half, three months until I moved for my internship for the summer. And I was like, oh, perfect time to get started with this. Uh, yeah, so I got started, and I – Sign up as a coach too. I was like, I found my coach Lindsay, and I was like, Hey, you're doing awesome things. I feel this incredible pull to be a part of your team and to to join this community of people. I think this is what I need. And I started doing twenty day fix, and I was like seven pounds in the first week, or week and a half, or something awesome. And then I was like, Holy crap, this actually works! Like this is easy and it works. And so I started telling my friends about it. I'm like, All right, I know this may seem like a little bit of an investment up front. It's not necessarily the deepest thing to get psychology in this program, but freaking A, look at my results. Like this rocks. This is doing good. This is what I needed for so long. And finally, like people started kind of be like, all right, if it's working for you, like I trust you, let's do it. Um, and I guess that's kind of where I started to think like I could help others, but it didn't, was not a home run off the bat. Like I just kind of made a few tiny sales here and there just because I thought my friends could benefit from it and they would love it as much as I did. And it worked for them too. But I mean, one of the first girls I had sold, one of the first friends I had um, recommended it to had her appendix taken out like two weeks later. So she never did very much with it. And another one like got engaged and moved across the country. Like things happen. So I was like, okay, well, like, maybe they don't love it as much as I do. But now they're all doing it and they love it. And so my confidence was up. I was happy. I was doing good. Again, I wanted to share that. And then with the coaching side, you get introduced to this whole world of personal development which I wasn't that familiar with before. And to me, I was like, that's what rich people do, or that's what people who have too much free time, or that's like all this stuff, like you just come up with excuses to not do it, you know? And I started doing it and I started listening to it and I was like, I freaking rock. Like I have gifts to offer the world. Sure, they need some work, like diamond in the rough needs some polishing, but I have something in me that other people need to see and I need to share that and be that connector and that motivator and just try and be a better person. And it's not always easy. Your family along the way um, can think that the changes aren't good. And it's a, a fine line between trying to be a better person and judging others for not being a better person. So I had to learn to, to say, this is something I'm choosing to not do anymore, whether it be gossip or talk negatively about people or talk negatively about myself. Like, I rock. I need to talk good about myself and my body. And it's not every day that I do that. I struggle. But it's about sharing that with other people around you so they understand what you're doing. So of the 40 pounds that I so selfly gained um, my junior year of college, I have lost 30 so far since I started beach body, uh, being a beach body coach and having that accountability with my customers. And again, I have that accountability to reach my goals thanks to challengers. So if there's a few days where I've skipped my workout and somebody's like, I want to see a sweaty selfie, Snapchat it to me immediately. Like they just give this added layer of motivation and encouragement. And if there's something going on in your life that is just getting you down, they say, you know, you're going to feel better after you work out. It sounds awful right now, but you regret every workout you don't do. You don't regret the workouts that you do do. 
So that is um, where, where that really comes into play. So obviously you can see since last summer, there's been a slight change in my physical appearance. Face pictures are probably my favorite thing. Um, they tend to be the first way you can see any change in your, in your weight loss or in your body. And even if you're just toning, if you don't lose any weight, but you're toning and you're building muscle, your face is still going to show that. So this is my little way. Like, and I didn't even realize, I was like, yeah, I've lost like 25 pounds at the point when I made this. I was like, it's pretty cool. And then I started looking through pictures and I was like, oh my God, my face looked bloated. Like I thought I looked dang good that day last June. I was like rocking my power suit and doing super awesome things. And looking back, I was like, Mm, I don't think I was nearly as confident as I, I was projecting that I was. And now I have more of that inner confidence to match my khaki outer confidence that's usually there. Um, so that's just a glimpse of that. And then the real meat is my inner transformation and my mental transformation through all this too. So I have the freedom. I run my own business. I choose how I get to coach others. I choose how I get to engage people, reach out to people. I choose what I get to share on social media. I choose what I don't get to share. And it's a crazy feeling knowing that at 22 years old, I run my own business. I am an entrepreneur. I set my own hours. I work hard and I build my business up sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. It just depends on what I'm willing to do. Um, but I've earned enough to be able to pay my rent, my utilities, and for my shakes last month. And I'm hoping to continue that trend so I don't have to worry about things like that through the summer. And I have an impact on those around me, which is really important to me to make a difference, a positive change in people's lives, and to help them gain confidence. And besides that, I get to chase my own dreams. <laughs> if you remember back to the beginning, I have spent so much of my life chasing other people's. And now I know that I'm doing this for me. And sure, I feel more attractive when I'm working out and eating healthy, but I'm not doing it for other people. I'm doing it so I believe in me and I feel confident and I'm happy with myself. And that was a big change because I used to always want to do it for other people. Uh, and then again, I get to work towards my fitness goals. I get paid to work out. Like if that isn't a motivator to get your butt up and moving, <laughs> I don't know what is. Um, and then the biggest thing to me is that I finally am starting to have freedom. And like right now, I'm literally in a hotel room in Kansas City, 11 and a half hours from home, working 12 hour days at a conference, and I'm still completely able to build my business. If I was at home, sitting in my PJs, drinking a glass of wine or a cup of tea, whatever your style is, you know, like I, that's freedom to me to be able to pick up and move across the country for four days. And not have to worry about it. And I know Kelsey can speak to that too, because well, you're in San Diego right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my big thing. I have freedom. And then, yeah, so this was just my, my um, motivator, because when you are out of shape, you don't really realize how much you can't do until something happens or you try and keep up with people that you should be able to keep up with, like your nieces and nephews or your kids you're babysitting and they want to run and play and you're like, I'm tired, I'm out of shape. And I've had also had knee problems for a long time and I've learned that working out, um, I had a partial knee replacement last year. So I've learned that working out regularly helps that. And instead of using that as an excuse like I did for the longest time, like literally, Senior year, I had to take gym class in high school, and I'd be like, can't do this, my knee hurts, can't do this, because my knees hurt, can't do this, because my knees hurt. I wish somebody would have been like, stop with the excuses and just freaking move. Like, quit using that as a crutch. Like, yeah, there's a chance it might dislocate, but it doesn't happen all the time. Like, quit letting that fear of moving and being active stop you from living life. And I feel like it did for so long. And I don't feel that way anymore. When I'm working out regularly and I have other people in my group to push me to work out regularly, I know that I have more energy and I have more enthusiasm and I feel freaking confident. And that's a big thing for me. I didn't have that for a long time. And when you get something that you haven't had, you realize it, you appreciate it, and you respect it. 
And so I was tired of being tired, broke, and chasing a paycheck. And I'm not saying I don't still appreciate that income that I get from coaching, but I appreciate being able to do it on my own terms and to make a difference. It's not mundane tasks day after day after day that I'm doing at an hourly wage job. I have to work hard, but you reap what you sow. So with that, that is the end of my section. <laughs> Sorry, that was fast. Okay. So can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay, so okay. a little bit about me. Um, I would say that I decided to do this with Taylor just because we're so alike in very many, very, in a lot of ways. Um, we both started actually working our businesses around the same time, and we um, are now both at Emerald. So we're basically in the same place in our business, and we have very fun, um, funky kind of style that really just kind of <laughs> meshes, um, and we just love to giggle and laugh and be ourselves. So I think that's uh, one of the great things is this business connects you with people. Um, I've actually never met Taylor in person, and. Um, I actually talked to her probably just as much as I talked to Marcus. She's probably become my best, probably one of my best friends in the last two months. Um, and I think that's one of the most amazing things about this business. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so a little bit of an overview. I'm 27, originally from Northern California in a cow town called Vacaville. I uh, moved to San Diego for uh, my dad's government job. And then um, last year in October, moved cross country to Virginia. So I live just outside DC. Um, 2012, I started my journey, lost 40 pounds. 2013, had some stuff going on. I gained back five pounds. 2014, I discovered my live for Shakeology um, and all the things that it's done for my body. Um, one of which is I haven't been sick since I started drinking Shakeology every day. Um, and then in 2015, it was time for me to give back because I was finally getting close to my goal, having lost uh, over 50 pounds. I just felt like my three year anniversary of starting, it just felt right to pay it forward and give it back. And then in April, less than two weeks ago, I left my nine to five. And in the last two months, I've lost another 10 pounds. So pretty darn close to my weight loss goal. <laughs> okay, so just a little visual. On the left, this is me on my 24th birthday, three years ago, about two weeks before the day that absolutely changed my life. This picture in the middle, um, that is me that's a more like visual revealing picture of me and how I was back then. Um, I never stepped on the scale, so I'm not quite sure how much I weighed, but it was about 190 pounds. Um, and then on the right, on the far right, that's me on my birthday, my 27th birthday this year. So um, there's been a big physical transformation for me, but I think the biggest transformation of all has been the one that's been inside my head and inside my heart and just where I'm at mentally, um, let alone physically. I mean, physically is different, but mentally I'm just in a completely different place. And that's really what I want to talk about. So I think this is where my journey kind of differs from Taylor. Um, my whole life, I just wanted to grow up, stay in the same city, which was San Diego. Um, I bought a house in 2012, about one and a half miles from my parents' house. I was in a serious relationship. We moved in. Um, I thought that I was set. You know, my sister bought a house another two miles away, and I just wanted to stay here and work my nine to five and, you know, come home and see my, you know, would-be spouse someday. And I just wanted to be in that, like, typical American dream, or so I thought. <laughs> Um, and back then I was really just in denial. So I themed this year, 2012 denial. And I think like Taylor, like you said, um, putting together these slides is really like a wake up call for myself to, to really think about what I've been through. So in 2012, um, that was my year of denial. And I had a girlfriend of mine who was one of my best friends. She invited me to a fit club 
And after three times of asking me over and over again, I finally was like, fine, like I'll go, like whatever. And I went with her to this fit club and we all, you know, I think I walked into that day eating a Costco burrito, like in my workout clothes, like, yeah, game on. And, you know, thinking like, whatever, I'm going to kill this. Like I had a lot of, like, I thought I was in the right place in my head and I got in there and was humbled because I blacked out 10 minutes into what they call turbo fire, um, had to stumble out of the room and crash on the floor because I couldn't, there was no way I was going to crash in front of everybody. So I like made it outside and then crashed on the floor, blacking out. Um, and I realized that day that I was not quite in the shape that I thought I was. Um, and that was really my wake up call. So the next day I stepped on the scale and I think it might've actually been two days later, but regardless, I stepped on the scale. I was, um, 188 pounds the day that I decided to actually make the change. And that was after the workout. So I'm assuming the workout burned some calories and pounds. So I was probably farther up there guys, <laughs> but I started my journey that year. Um, and then and then that year, I lost 40 pounds um, doing turbo fire from my parents' garage. I did it every Tuesday, Thursday. I think there's one other day I did it with my two best friends and my, sis my sister and my friend Kristen, the girl that invited me, and I lost 40 pounds that year. Um, and it took me eight months, but I was doing it on my own. You know, I didn't have anybody to be like, I've done it, and this is what you do. Like, there was none of that. It was all like trial and error read some stuff online, think that it might work, but eight months, 40 pounds, that was my year of denial and change. So 2013, I started that year um, with a long overdue end to a long-term relationship that I was in. And I tagged this year as my year of destruction. <laughs> I made a lot of bad decisions. I was in a really bad place up here. Um, I've never had lower confidence in my life or thought that, like I've never been on my own in my life. And so this was a part of like a very humbling, destructive part where, you know, you do things that you don't really want to remember. <laughs> um, that's when I gained back about five pounds. Luckily that was all I gained back. Um, and that it was tough because I went from two incomes to one income that year. I borrowed thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to stay in my house um, and it was really just the lowest point in my life, mentally, emotionally, and, and so forth. And then by accident, um, I met and started a relationship with my amazing boyfriend, Marcus. I then left my job working for the government, started working for a software company. Then my job at the software company was eliminated <laughs> and I got moved into a new job. And so basically that year was just a year of change, um, uh, for the things that were affecting my life. So then in 2014, things kind of slowed down and that's when I found each body again in my life. And basically what happened is I became a discount coach. Um, I did sell two things that year. I sold a challenge pack to my mom. I sold a challenge pack to one of my friends who said, don't you dare put me in a challenge group. And then she never really did the workouts. So it was interesting to say the less, to say the least. Um, and then I moved back home and then eventually out to Virginia, which is where I hit my next low. I said it was my year of change um, because being with a pilot, they're gone 66% of the time. And when you move to a new city and you have no friends and the person you went there with is gone all the time, it's like, whoa. <laughs> I feel you on that one with the military. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when I hit my absolute lowest. Um, well, maybe my second lowest, depressed and all that stuff. And it was in January of this year, 2015, that this girl reached out to me about something called the Passion Project, which is a challenge group with a nice name, talking about working on ourselves from the inside out and it changed my life. And she helped me really see that everything that I had struggled with in my past, all my pain and all that stuff was actually the things that were my gift to everybody else to share them to share how I overcome them, to share it with someone else. And that's when I signed up as a hobby coach. And I started inviting people and, and, you know, just casually sharing my story online, sharing my before and afters and just talking about it. 
you know, and connecting with new people. And in the first two months, uh, it just grew like exponentially more than I could have ever even imagined. Um, just by sharing it. Cause I'm, I'm not a salesy person. I'm really just not, but just sharing what happened and people just naturally want to know, like, what are you doing? Like, I want to do it too. Like, I want to do it with you. You seem kind of bubbly and, and I'm kind of quirky too. And you're kind of quirky and like, let's do this. And it kind of just became this thing. And then I realized, you know, in March with the way that my life is, um, being with a pilot that travels all the time, like there was no way that I could continue to be chained to a desk. It was like the biggest nightmare for me anyway, um, to not be able to visit my family when I wanted to, you know, or go with Marcus on trips when he's gone. And, and it just wasn't for me. And so in April, you know, I took a leap of faith and I said, I'm going to go all in on this. And, and I think it's going to be a great year. Like Taylor said, I'm still in the beginning stages, um, helping people, you know, I've, in our first week of my first group, they lost over 20 pounds cumulatively and it's just going up from there. Um, and I think that my one thing that I really want to say today is that no matter where you were, head trash, you know, situation in your life, you know, depression or whatever it might be, you're the only thing standing between yourself and greatness um, because you can change your tests of your life into your testimonies and, and then you can share those with other people and really make a difference. So with that being said, I uh, figure we would just kind of wrap it up with the different types of coaches. There are three. There's discount coaches, hobby coaches, and business builders, and I've definitely been all three. <laughs> um, discount coaches, basically, and Teal, you can hop in here at any point in time. If you like Shakeology and you sign up as a coach, you actually get 25% off your Shakeology, which ends up being about a $16 uh, discount after you factor in the business administration fees. And it's really the benefit is you one get the opportunity if you want it to work the business, and two you get a discount on your Shakeology. So I mean it only makes sense if you like to save money. Then the second one, which is a hobby coach, um, you know you like Shakeology, you want the discount, you get to work the business, you get to help people. And you get a little bit of extra income just by sharing what you're already doing. Naturally, people are going to ask you, like, what are you doing? I want to do what you're doing. And naturally, you, you know, you, you share it and it, you get a little bit of extra income here and there. Taylor, you got anything else to add to that one? Nope, doing great. All right. And then the last one is business builders, which uh, would be like me and Taylor. We like Shakeology. We like the discount. We like helping people. We're now addicted to helping people and we're seeing the freedom that it's given us in our lives. Like for Taylor to be in Kansas City, <laughs> um, for me to be in San Diego, Florida, New York, you know, next week, North Carolina, like I can go anywhere and I can work my business anywhere where I have cellular reception. Um, and that's addictive for sure. Um, I would say that I definitely figured out with a discount coach and I was like, Hey, save some money. But then I was kind of like, I could help a few people. And you can see that my, from what I talked about, my transgression through all of this has led to a business builder, but I didn't start that way. And I have a few coaches on my team who started as hobby coaches. They wanted to dip their toes in. They just loved what they were doing. They wanted to share it. And then as they kind of got that feeling of helping other people gain their confidence and make changes that they wanted to make for a long time, it turns into building a business because it is so invigorating to help others like that. With that, I don't know if I have anything else to add, Chelsea. I think we're almost out of time. Yeah, we've got about four minutes left um, for that. I mean, really, I think, well, I think it's awesome. If I'm being honest, <laughs> right. but, um, do you have any questions that we could answer or like, do you want to stop recording calls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let me stop the recording. Okay. Cool. Uh, I don't really have any